Welcome to the National Soccer Coaches Association of America Club Standards Project. My name is David Newbury and I'm the coordinator of the NSCAA Club Standards Project, an initiative designed to raise the performance of coaches and players one club at a time. Since May 2012, we have had over now 470 clubs join the project, representing approximately 320,000 players and 30,000 coaches. The participation is now more affordable and for just $500, a youth program can receive an intermediate evaluation that includes a review of current performance, a comparison against best practices in player development, coaching and administration, scores for the 20 most common performance variables of successful clubs. In just four weeks, your organization could receive a report and recommendations to take your program to the next level. If you're interested, please contact me and we'll assign a consultant to the process immediately. Today I'm delighted we have Scott Lieber, the founder and CEO of iSoccer, to present today's topic, which is called Using Game Mechanics and Motivational Psychology to Ignite Skill Development. Scott is the ideal individual to present today's topic. He is the founder of iSoccer in 2008, and he had a single question in mind. Could you create a universal system that motivates players of all levels to train harder and to increase their technical ability. And since 2010, since they launched, they've had over 1,175,000 scores logged. Scott has spent over four years building that platform that integrates soccer, technology, and motivational psychology to push the player development to the next level. He's a graduate from Stanford University with a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering, and he was also an Arizona State Player of the Year in 1997, scoring, uh, sorry, breaking the single-season goal-scoring record. He was then drafted to the Columbus Crew after college. He was a member of the Long Island Rough Riders when he won the national championship in 2002, and he founded a training company on Long Island in 2002 which grew to over 5,000 youth players attending his programs over the course of a week. He sold that company in 2007. Welcome, Scott, to the presentation, and uh, look forward to what you've got to say. Well, first off, thank you, Dave, and uh, thank you to everybody out there, and uh, we're going to jump right in. Um, let me make sure I have control here. Let me click on this. Please hold on one second. So I know uh, the webinars are always a funny situation because you can't see anybody in person. So uh, I can't read the faces of everybody out there listening. So uh, <laughs> hopefully everybody enjoys and we're going to jump right in. Um, so today I want to focus on one question. Uh, and, and that question being, let me make sure I have control here. There it is. Can, we make, can you make technical development fun for your, for, for your players so they want to improve? You know, soccer is such an amazing game. I mean, it, it's a very complex game. I mean, you have tactics, mental, all those things. But, you know, I'm a very firm believer in ice soccer, and what we've tried to create over here is, is that if players are comfortable with the ball and if we can find a way for them to fall in love with the ball and just love being able to round the ball, then a lot of the, a lot of the player development, you know, down the road is going to be so much easier because they're going to just have that comfort with the ball. And so, really, I'm going to, come, I'm going to start with this question, and I'll just say it one more time. Can you make technical development fun for your players so they want to improve? That's what we're going to kind of key the entire presentation around. Instead of jumping around, we're going to always going to kind of come back to the, to the essential question. Uh, the skill development equation, since we're talking about game mechanics and motivational psychology, and we really key into skill development, um, here's a quick equation that we use internally at iSoccer. It's, it's the number of touches times the efficiency of touches equals, equals mastery. And so really, it's very simple. How much time do the kids spend with the ball? And then what are they doing with that time? There's another part of the equation, mastery times match conditions that we, we think is more execution. You know, it's one thing to be able to do scissors in your backyard or at practice, but can you do it in a game at the right time, at the right moment, in the, in the right instance? And so that's what we call execution. So, but for, this, for the sake of this conversation, the, the sake of, of what I soccer and what really we focus on as an organization and as a mission it is the mastery part. Can we improve the number of touches and the time spent with the ball to, to raise the mastery um, is what, what the goal is today. So increase touches and efficiency. So what we have here is we have 
can we take what we see on the left as players, you know, dribbling around in a box, which, you know, a lot of teams and, 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 and uh, players do it around the country, how can we take that where maybe they're, they're spending time with the ball, but maybe they're not, they're, their head's not in it, or maybe they're not being the most efficient? How do we take that to the right? And, and, and I know this player is about to get ready, but the look of intensity is like, can we make that time with the ball more efficient? Can we make every touch, you know, almost pushing it to their level, not just, you know, inside, outside, inside, but really pushing it to the level? And another way to raise the equation is how do we get kids at home? Here we have kids, three kids playing on video games, which are, are very excited here and, and watching very intently, to actually practicing at home. Um, quick story on, on this little girl that is uh, painting a soccer field in her backyard. She was a, a player of a recreational, she's a recreational player, a nine-year-old that the parent ended up writing uh, iSoccer an email saying, you know what, after they did the, the test and, you know, kind of went through the program, she actually painted a soccer field in her backyard and started practicing every day on her own. And it was because of the things that we're going to talk about right now, about how we've leveraged the game mechanics and the motivational psychology to excite a, a player of a, a nine-year-old recreational player in the middle of uh, California. So that's the goal, to, you know, is to increase touches and increase in efficiency. So also what I would like to do is actually just kind of quickly define game mechanics and motivation. So game mechanics, a process that allows for people to have fun and for, for people to have fun, have a funny and engaging experience, excuse me, from Wikipedia. And motivation, the arousal in an organism to take action toward the desired goal. So the two words I want to key into here on game mechanics is the process. You know, it's actually, you know, if, if I, I kind of close my eyes, like a process. That means it can be built. That means there's a system there. That means actually you can create something, you know, to, to create game mechanics. So it's not just something that happens randomly. It's a process. So we can actually, you know, intelligently design a system that actually can, can engage and, and allow people to have fun. And the motivation, what I want, the two, two words I want to key, key into is take action. You know, we want kids to take action. So to come back to the original point of, you know, where we started and the core question that we started with is, can you make tech, technical development fun for your players so that they want to improve? So tying that back into game mechanics, you know, can we make it fun and then tying it to motivation? Can we get them to want to? So that's where these two kind of come together is that can we get it, can we, can we get it, can we, can, can we excite players to want to take the level? So let's jump into the core characteristics of a game. So when you think of a game, um, any type of game, a soccer game, uh, any type of game, there's a very clear outcome. And here we have the, the women w winning the World Cup and they're celebrating. There's here, and then here we have uh, a couple years before that, uh, same women's world uh, national team losing. And so, but in a, in a game, there's a very clear outcome. There's, there's scores, there's tie, there's time, there's rules, there's wins, there's, there's, there's no ambiguity in, in, the, in the outcome of a game. And you can think of any, any game out there that, Anytime you're playing, there's a winner, there's a loser, or there's a tie, and there's, there's certain constraints and restrictions, scores, times, rules, inbounds, out-of-bounds. There's stuff that go into a game that make it very clear that everybody that's either participating or watching knows what's going on and understands what, where, they're, where they stand immediately in the game. Another core characteristic of the game is competition. And there's a couple different ways for competition. There's self. So here, here's an image of Sudoku. You know, they're not playing against anybody other than their self. There's no, you know, I guess there are online forums right now out there in the, uh, <laughs> on the web. But for, for all intents and purposes, they, they're playing against themselves. And, and that really is, can I accomplish this and go to the next level? Another one is Monopoly. That's when you're playing on your own, but you're playing against other players. So that's competitive. And then the last one is team. Obviously, in soccer, we're, we're more of a team setting. But when you think of a, of a game, you can compete against yourself, you can compete as an individual against others, or you can com compete as a unit to play against others. So those are the core real characteristics of a, of a game um, that build, uh, that, that make it com competition. So then let's switch gears to, to, to motivation. Um, there's a lot of different characteristics in psychology around motivation, but the, the, the number one, according to a couple you know, well-known uh, psychologists, it's individual achievement, is that when individuals are able to achieve, they're able to have earned success, ownership, and a sense of pride. And that's really, when they, and, and the key thing here is that there's no ambiguity and there's, there's no subjectiveness, is that 
this individual who's at the top of the mountain, like he knows exactly where he is. There's there's no um, he earned it. There's ownership, and, he, and he's very excited that that he's up there. So let me jump into recognition. This is the second thing of motivation that's very powerful. And this is Michael Phelps, you know, earning a gold medal. Obviously, he would, you know, if he won the the Olympics and and he earned the medal, but no one was around. It's pretty special that there's someone there to actually recognize him for his efforts and. And there's different forms of recognition. They can be in private, you know, a, 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 a high five or a little word to a player. They can be in front of others, um, or it could be a leaderboard. And I think I, we would probably say the Olympics is more of a, a leaderboard stance, where uh, they're up there and they're being they're being uh, recognized in front of everybody. So what I want to do here is that, and I know I'm going to talk about ice soccer a little bit, and, I, and I'm not trying to do a hard sell on ice soccer. It's more just what we do as an organization to try and get the game mechanics and. and uh, and, and, the and the motivational psychology out of it. So over on the left, we have the clear outcome. We have individual and team competition. We have individual achievement and specific recognition. So what we've done in iSoccer is that we've tried to create a game out of technical development. As you can see here, we're, we're, we're testing. This is actually at the, uh, uh, an ID2 event in, in Phoenix, Arizona. We're testing players. So what we've done with technical development, technical technique, is that we, we've added time, rules, and levels. And so what that has done is it's, one, as, as, a, as a clear outcome, right when the player is done with that exercise or that, that assessment, they know, they know exactly what they got. You know, according to, you know, over here on the right, we have a, the, the ten, 10 different levels. They know exactly where they're at in terms, of, in terms of competition. Because they know where they're at and that there's no ambiguity around it, it's very specific, they're able to either raise their individual level so they can compete against themselves, like, for example, as Sudoku, as Sudoku or they can also compete against their, their, their teammates, and that's very healthy competition. As long as, the, as, long as we're not evaluating a starting player based on, you know, uh, you know hey, you know, if you didn't do it, it's more healthy uh, competition where, hey, the team averages 75, can, and we need everybody to get to 80. Or, or there's, there's ways to, to create competition around individual and uh, individual technique. Then there's also individual achievement. You know, right now, in technical development, there's a lot of hey, you know, uh, well, let's let's back up. How do you right now encourage technical individual achievement in technical development? Well, maybe they do something in the game. Maybe they, they they pull scissors off in a game. Maybe they control the ball really well. But if you really think about it, it's pretty subjective on for a player's perspective on when they're really improving or when they're not improving on on, on their technical ability. What we've tried to do is make individual individual achievement, which is core to motivation a key concept around around ice soccer. So even if a player, for example, starts at level white down here at score 30, you know, if they go to score 40 and they earn the next level, they have individually achieved something and there's no ambiguity around it. And I think that's one of the, the key things is that we've taken the subjectiveness out of, uh, uh, of it. And because we've taken that you know, subjectiveness out of technical ability, you can create a system where at the end of the day, we've, made tech, we've turned technical development into a game. The player, and so just to kind of reiterate that, a player knows exactly where they're at. There's a very clear outcome on, on, on what they did. The individual team, there's, there's, you, you've now created a, a forum of competition, healthy competition, not only on an individual level and a team level, um, because players are on the same measuring stick. Players are able to work their way up the levels, very similar to a karate system, so they know exactly what they need to do. So, you're not, you're, so if a, for example, if a kid can juggle three, you're not asking him to juggle 20, maybe the next level is five. So it's very much in, in tune or in, in reach of what they can do. Um, it's a stretch, there's, no, there's no unrealistic goal. It's a stretch goal, but it, they, they can get to it. And then specific recognition. As a coach, it's sometimes hard um, to recognize tech, uh, individual technical development. It's easier as a coach to recognize uh, uh, team winning, team losing, um, Johnny scoring a goal, Sally scoring a goal, a good save, a good tackle. But around technical development, there's it's, it's really hard to kind of key into something that's very specific where the kid's like, oh, I get it. I, I, I scored on this in October. I worked hard for a month, and then I scored on this in November, and I improved, and my coach is able to, to recognize me. So. This is what we've done, um, and just to give you a, a, a little bit of an idea around the feedback that we're getting, um, to give a kind of a, 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 a diverse, uh, you know, kind of a testimonials. 
this is Dan Ferguson up in Bo Bozeman, Montana. Their club rolled out, you know, the, the game mechanics and the idea of, of what we're doing. And his his quote is: instead of sitting sitting on the couch playing S Xbox, my players were in the backyard trying to level up. You know, and, and he rolled it out from 10 year olds up to up to 18 year olds. Here's Evan, you know, a player that was you know average player in, in the on the on a, on a team that was state competitive. You know, I shocker showed me what I needed to work on. Now I've got a shot at playing college. And then, and then here's the girl that that was painting in the backyard. And, and to quote her father, my daughter never never used to practice at home. After she started playing ice soccer, she actually created a soccer field in her backyard and spray paint and and with spray paint to help her practice. So, again, I, I'm not trying to do a, a hard sell on uh, on what we do on ice soccer, but the the core of what we do between um, technical development is what I'm trying to sell here. So. You know, in these three um, testimonials or these three, you know, different different sayings, you know, what we've done here is the first one is that we've increased time. Instead of sitting on the couch playing Xbox, my parents were out trying to level up. We've increased time with the ball. The second testimony goes to the efficiency with it. He knew what he needed to work on as opposed to just saying, hey, just go home and kick the ball again. So I was like, actually, go home and work on, on your level. And then the last one, in, in, which is the one that actually excites me the most, um, is you know, we, we found a way to motivate a player that was uh, maybe not even enjoying the process of practice, you know, didn't really enjoy going to practice and never trained at home. We actually found a way, because of this motivation and this game mechanics, to have a player actually fall, fall more in love with the game. And uh, so actually, out of all these, that's actually my favorite. So, you know, to kind of uh, wrap up here, uh, before we kind of go, go to the Q&A, so for your club and your team, you know, again, you don't need to use ice soccer, but can you can you find a way to to incorporate clear outcomes and competitions gaming mechanics is is is, the, is is what we're looking for how do I make a mundane training fun are there drills that I already do that I could create a game out of it everybody here I'm sure everybody listening on this call in this webinar is an experienced coach a club director involved with soccer there are so many drills out there that you know are, are that could take it to the next level by applying clear outcomes and competition. I mean, there, it's, it's no surprise that you know when you add some sort of race or you add some sort of scoring system that that the, the, the intensity level jumps. So I guess you know how can you do that around? And you know I'm gonna, I'm going to strongly advocate for technical development. How can you create a game out of technical development? And then on the flip side of that, after you've created the game, a system of achievement and recognition. You know, motivational psychology. I mean, you know, it is proven that when when individuals, you know, for kids and adults, when they achieve and they know they've achieved, you know, and they, they've taken ownership over it, um, that, that, that's a very exciting and very motivating factor. So it's like, how will my players know for certain they're getting better? You know, it's like, and that's individual achievement. Again, to kind of go back to the team level, it's like, you know, maybe there's a right midfielder that plays a really good game and the team wins, but he didn't score any goals. How does, he knows the team may be improving or the team may be crossing, but how does an individual player know that they're getting better? And then how do I want to recognize players? I mean, the, the, the amazing thing about how you can recognize players, you can do that all the way from a pat on the back to a high five to team goals to anything you want to a, you know, we have some, we have some teams that do Gatorade pizza parties if the team level gets, gets raised up to a high enough level. So there's different ways to recognize players and to really call it out. So I think to, to kind of close it out here, I kind of want to leave you with the, the opening question and now kind of turn it into a, a challenge for all of us. I mean, it's what we work on every day here at iSoccer is that can we make technical development fun for your players so they want to improve? So it's kind of a challenge for, for everyone on this call and for us here even, even working, you know, every day on what we're trying to make better is that how can we make, you know, falling in love with the ball, getting comfortable with the ball, spending time with the ball just fun for kids? Um, you know, whether it's structured or unstructured, just any way to do that so that they want to continue improving. Um, because I think if we're able to, as a, if we're able to solve that or, or figure out a solution, that, or, or maybe solve the wrong word, if we're able to make it better, I mean, solving, I don't think we're ever going to be able to solve it, but if we're, ever, if we're just able to make that better and keep pushing that forward and kids have more fun and they're spending more time with the ball than, you know, as a, you know, as a team, as a country, as, 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 as a, just soccer players, you know, we'll become um, player development and, taking the step to the next level of introducing, you know, some pretty serious tactics and other things is going to be much easier if every player is more comfortable with the ball. Um, so with that said, that's kind of, you know, my, my challenge to, to myself and to everyone out here is, is how can we do that? And hopefully today you've, you've taken away some different things. And I try to make, you know, without getting, you know, 
too crazy, try to as simplify it as simple as possible. Game mechanics and motivational psychology, clear clear outcome, and and 